Thank you, guys. Thank you, Richard. That's funny, you know, the you know, hand sanitizer stuff there at the end, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit with welcoming newcomers, but uh, those that don't know me, which I don't think is anyone here, my name is Daniel. And I have been saved by the grace of Jesus, and um, I am celebrating recovery over sexual addiction and currently working on negative thinking. Uh, so thank you so much. So we are going now into serving our newcomers. I'm trying to stay too, not too far, though. Um, serving our newcomers. So today has all been about serving, and I've been watching a lot of the... Uh, Celebrate Recovery, that every Friday night, Johnny Baker, the pastor of Celebrate Recovery, the son of John Baker, the founder of Celebrate Recovery, he does a Facebook Live every Friday. And I keep hearing the statements over and over, and if you get a chance to watch that, if you're on Facebook, go watch them. They're also on YouTube. But, um, you know, they keep saying, he keeps saying, Johnny Baker keeps saying, John Baker, Cheryl Baker, they keep saying, you know, everything we do, but our celebrate recovery at Saddleback is for the newcomers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we get this mindset that we're talking about serving and sometimes even serving, and we've, we've heard really well from um, Pastor Mark, we've heard well from others here as well, that you know serving isn't about us. It's right. about the other people. Right. Yeah. But sometimes serving even becomes about us. You know, look at what I did. You know, I set this up. Oh, I lead this group. Oh, I... Yeah. Instead of, when yeah. we can change our mindset and go, what does a newcomer think and expect? Because they do not care, be really honest right now, a newcomer doesn't care if you set up a coffee table or not. But, if the coffee table isn't set up, they're going to notice. Yeah. Okay, so they don't know, they don't always know who you are. And, it's, and serving, so I want to talk about serving our newcomers and getting into that mindset of, how do we make everything we do about the newcomer? Right. So there's a couple of tips to that. And first, I want to just read some scripture here as well. Romans 12, 9 and 10. I think we have that one there, Skyrim. And I'm going to read it in a couple of versions. But this says, this says, don't just pretend to love others. Right. Don't pretend. I love Celebrate Recovery. Many of you would say the same thing because it's a place where we don't have to pretend. The mask comes off. We get to actually really be real with people in the good, the bad, and the ugly. So don't pretend to love others. Really love them. Right. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Now, I love that this is thrown in here. I'm assuming Paul wrote Romans. That's my own assumption. You might think differently, but that's fine. You're wrong. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Kidding. But I, I personally believe we don't actually know the author, but I believe it's Paul or someone that was very closely working with him. Why would he throw this part in here when we're talking about loving others? And do what is good and hate what is bad. Because when newcomers come, they're going to see your life as well. Right. How does this person live? Yeah. Are they living right? Are they living right and holy? Yeah. Is it now they were really nice to me, but man, they are messed up. Yeah. And suddenly, you know, we get into this waiting situation instead of going. So he throws us in here because this is actually a big part of how do we love new, new people? How do we love others? So hold tightly what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. Take delight in honoring each other. And I'm going to just read this real quick in the message translation as well. I'm going to go through some notes here. Is this the message? This is the message. Yeah, so I'm going to. Oh, this is the new Yeah, sorry. Message. Switch this. Okay, here we go. One more time. Now think about this for our newcomers, and then I'll help explain some of it. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life for good. Be good friends who love deeply and practice playing second fiddle. In other words, it's not about you. So, here's some tips that I've heard many times at different conferences and, and training times. 
about how we treat newcomers, but I found these also right in scripture. So the very first one on there in your papers, you should all have those as well, and there should be some blanks there. Number one, do not pretend. How do you spell that? It'll be on the screen. Because <laughs> I don't know. It's like spelling me, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm out of the first round. K A T. Okay. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> don't pretend. When people, and he, you know, Tim Hawkins started to get into it there about the sand, the half sandy. And you know, there's something that when someone walks up and it's their first time, and you're like, hey, so glad you're here, but you're like, don't touch me because of germs. Yeah. It doesn't. You're actually pretending. I, you know, I know you're thinking about yourself. Right. But again, this isn't about you. It's about right. a newcomer. Right. So how do we switch that mindset and go? I want them everything. My body language. Yeah. My words. My smile to say welcome. Yeah. I don't want to pretend. Um, we've had struggles at times with, and I'll talk about conflict in a later session, because I've had that probably with almost everyone in my life at some point, so, um, as, not, not my wife, no, we never fight. Um, love me. But, uh, you know, there's, there's, when people come, and I remember we used to have a guy that would kind of joke, and he, it was people he was familiar with. But someone would more, oh, you're here again? Now, that's not a newcomer, it's someone we've seen over and over. And he's pretending, he's, he's, he's making a joke, he's trying to be funny. Sure. But we don't know the week that that person has had. Right. We don't know what they've gone through, and maybe they're feeling like, oh, I don't fit in here, I shouldn't be right. a celebrated recovery. Right. Why am I? And, and when their first words that they're greeted with are, oh, you're here again? Yeah. It just re establishes the lie. And they're hearing in their head instead of the truth, you're loved and you're welcome here. Yeah. So don't pretend. Don't be pretend. Um, I don't need a car park team at home church, and we, we try and train our parking team. When someone pulls in the parking lot, we give them the big smile and yeah. a big wave yeah. as if it was my best friend. Yeah. Come on. Now, am I pretending? Yes, a bit, because I can't see in the car. There's reflections. There's, you know, you can't always see. And I don't have everyone's car memorized. It's another white. Honda, like, you know, but you, 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 I genuinely, whether I see them or not, I, it's my heart right. that I need to change. And so I go, okay, I'm going to be genuine. I don't care if it's someone I've had issues with. I don't care if when they come in, I'm going to wave yep. and I'm going to smile. And we do the same thing with Silver Recovery. Yeah. Don't pretend. Genuinely love people. Be good friends. That was part of that verse as well. I used to have a pastor that would say, you never know who your next best friend is. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes downplay that. I think of the step study that we just done and Shell shared earlier. Um, you know, there's friendships that are built and grow that you maybe didn't expect at the beginning of a step study. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. And when Sheldon first walked in, I could have easily just, he could have, you know, I'm here to serve. And I, I, I knew you weren't as humble as you maybe thought I, you know, <laughs> when I came across. Because you see it, but, but you think the best in people. Sure. You want the best in people. You try to help for people. Yeah. And so when he came, I just I thought, Sheldon's here, and I don't know his motives of why he came, why he wants to help, and I want to be a leader, and I don't know why. But I'm just gonna be nice to him, I'm gonna be and we've now built such a good friendship. Right. Yeah. I could have shut that down and well, you didn't follow the protocol and you haven't done our steps and you haven't you're not ready to leave. You think you can just come in here and be a leader? No, I, I cultivated a friendship and now we're friends. Yeah. And and we can call each other in the good and yeah. the bad. And you know, there's things that build you never know who your next friend could be. Yeah. And maybe you're thinking, well, I don't need any more friends. Okay, this is again, this isn't about you. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could change that because they might need a friend. They might need you yeah. to be their best friend and really help them through this season of life. And literally, in yeah. this ministry especially, we are dealing sometimes with life and death situations. Yeah. People are this far away sometimes from a breaking point and, and leaving the city, leaving the country, ending their own life. And you never know what just being a friend can do. Next one is more of a practical one. 
Don't just tell. Take time to show. Now, what does this mean? I've seen over and over newcomers come in and go, oh, uh, hey, I'm new here. Where's the, where's the bathroom? Oh, it's just down the hall. It's just over there. I'm busy. I'm busy greeting people right now. I can't leave. Like we get the wrong, and, and I, I, I'm not. I'm being. I'm exaggerating for effect here. But um, sometimes we get so stuck in our own. Well, I'm serving. Again, it's not about me. Yeah. It's more about that person. And if I leave my post for two minutes mm -hmm. to go walk them down the hall and say, hey. This is we got bathrooms right here. There's coffee. There's oh, where's where's this, where can I smoke? I'm not a smoker. I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna judge someone for doing that. I'm gonna say hey, let me walk you out there. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. I'm gonna chat with you, build a friendship. And if we just take the time to show instead of tell, right? People suddenly feel like wow, they valued me enough yeah. to well, leave what they were doing. And show me what my my question was. So don't just tell, show. I heard therapists say, and many studies that I've read even lately that talk about people are starving for love. Yeah. Love for God, especially as Christians, we know that and believe that. Yeah. And the number one love we need is to introduce people to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Love from others, and even learning how to love themselves. Yeah. How do we learn? And people are starving for love in one of those three areas, or all three of those areas. And we need to just, yeah, go ahead. Um, love from God, love from others, and love for self. And people are starving for love, so we need to help people actually feel loved. So here's what I want to do. How many for time, Shirley? Okay, um, we're going to take two minutes. Maybe less, but two minutes at your own table right now with the people you're sitting with. I want you to come up with at least one or two practical ways to help people feel loved. So think about what even helped you feel loved when you first started coming or feel connected or valued. We got one to two minutes. Talk to your tables. Mark said, go. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. So if someone at your table hasn't shared an idea, ask someone else as well. Ten seconds. All right. So let's hear some ideas. What are some practical ways that we can just show love to newcomers? Listening. Listening. Maybe some other ones. Sit with them. I heard Shirley say that that's huge. When a newcomer and this, when a newcomer comes and you start to connect with them, it is huge to say, "Hey, do you have a seat?" Yes, no. Would you like to sit with me? Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen so many times, I know everyone in this room is afraid to sit at the front tables. <laughs> um, but on a Tuesday night or a Monday night, newcomers aren't. And if you say to a newcomer, hey, you want to come sit with me in front? They, don't, they actually think, wow, I just got the best seat in the house. Yeah. They do. Yeah. And so it really is sometimes that's a great one. Sit with them. Anyone? Other thoughts? This table. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm boring. You're talking about flooring? <laughs> Not really. So the people in the eye can be fairly interested. Look people in the eye. Genuinely interested. Ask questions. Well, you know, ask questions. And again, this is a lot of, they teach this in public speaking and, and charisma kind of stuff, but we, we in our culture wait so long, we're trained that we're just looking for their mouth to stop so that I can say what I want to say, instead of just going, hmm. 
That's why I love sharers and stuff. We get to just listen without being able to have to apply. Yeah. Yeah. And if we actually apply that principle to newcomers, you don't always have to reply. Yes. Right. Sometimes you can just wow. Sure. I don't have I don't have to one out. Oh, you're you were fishing in the waves were 60 feet high. Well, I one time was in 80 foot waves. <laughs> Who cares? You just made a newcomer not feel welcome because you just went out to. Yeah. Instead of just going, wow, that's awesome. Tell me more ask questions as Carl said. Any other thoughts? Come yeah. more. It's more. When somebody asks you, how are you doing? Yeah. And you can actually tell that they're open to stand there and listen. Mm -hmm. wow. So many people will come up and say, how are you doing? Just to make themselves feel good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's really good. Yes. And again, our culture, how are you doing, has kind of become saying hi. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. I really don't care how you're doing. Yeah. Instead of going, hey, how are you doing? And when you stop and listen, that's you, Joe Mark. That's yeah. great. Carla, what did you say? No, I'm just okay. Encourage them to come back. We were glad to see you here. Introduce them to somebody. Introduce them to somebody. So these are all great things. Sunny. Very good. Yeah. Greet them with a smile. Mm -hmm. And this comes back to the be genuine. Yeah. If you are having a rough night, which we all have at times, yeah. I've had at times, tell tell Shirley. <laughs> tell like honestly, <laughs> let, let the ministry leader know, let the team know, because we can switch positions rather than have you <laughs> like, no. You need a night to just chill out. Okay, go sit in the corner. You're on time out. You are on leadership time out. Go deal with you and then go deal with others. That's how we like the corner, right? Yeah, that's right. So, um, the last point for this part is again, genuinely care. And genuine care continues beyond the first conversation. We've all talked about things, how to make people feel valued and loved on that first input. But it carries on beyond that first conversation. So what do I mean by that? Remembering names when people come back a second week shows care and love. <laughs> it shows that you thought them. Follow-up calls for newcomers to actually not be afraid and say, hey, we had a great conversation. Could I call you this week? Yeah. Most people, again, they're starving for love. They're going to say yes. And then you have their phone number, you do a quick follow-up call, and suddenly they feel loved and valued. So this is some of the intro parts, and I'm still good for time. So um, we're going to get into the next session now, which is actually the facilitating the Newcomers 101 group. So another way that you can make people feel loved when they come in, if you see someone's new, or you have brought someone new, sit with them in the introduction to CR group. Sit with them, come with them. Even if you're a leader, it doesn't mean you have to lead the newcomers group. You can if you'd like to, take out a different leader so they can go to a shared group. But it means you can actually just sit there and be a part of what so that they feel valued and welcomed. Right. Um, so that's a big one to sit in. So what is the purpose of Celebrate Recovery 101? And I think we got slides for that too. Yeah. We'll find out. So what is the purpose of Celebrate Recovery 101? Number one is, again, this is all about the newcomers. It is to explain to new participants what the program is all about. It's to explain to newcomers, new participants, what the program is all about. Number two is to protect current participants and share groups. And we do that through the small group guidelines. When most people come, they, they have a lot of questions. What is the program? How does this work? And how does this and if you can answer some of them great, but also don't be afraid to say, hey, I would love to sit with you in the newcomers group and let's learn together what the program is. Right. Um, because it's already the work's done for you. There's a video, there's a script, there's a, it's laid out, and you don't have to be the one now to figure out, oh, I have to explain every detail, and what if I miss something, and oh no, they may never come back, and that's a lot of pressure. 
Yeah. Instead of just going, hey, we've got a great class that's 20 to 30 minutes that we would just love to, I'll sit with you in it and, and we'll learn together. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, why does this protect our small groups? Because, very simply, I want you guys to feel safe that when someone comes into your, into your room where you are sharing openly and honestly, that you know they at least understand the program and they at least know the guidelines. Mm -hmm. They have at least been vetted a little bit before they go into that. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of people, well, I, I brought a friend, but they don't want to go to the newcomers group. Well, they've done AA, so we're just going to, please don't do that. Because again, it's not just about them, it is. We want them to feel welcomed, but we also need to protect the group that's here. Yeah. And so we need to be able to say, hey, uh, part of the process here is we sit in on the newcomers group. And I would love to do that with you. The group guidelines, and I will read those in just a moment, but number three and it's to introduce, the most important in my opinion, is to introduce others to healing through Jesus Christ. Without that, we just have a program. Right. And so we have had some newcomers groups. This is now more if you're facilitating a group. Sometimes it goes different than the script. Be prepared for that. Uh, there's been times Ashley and I have led. Uh, there's been times I've led with Pastor Mark and Candace and Shirley. And, and sometimes we just sit there and someone, we don't even say anything. That person will literally just cry and share their story for a half hour. How welcoming would they feel if they're opening up maybe for the first time? They finally feel like there's a safe place. And I say, oh, okay, good. We, we're on a schedule here. I gotta, hey, we, I gotta tell you about these guidelines. And you now I try to get there. I try to direct it there. But sometimes people just need to share. And it's not bad in those cases. Go share, share, share. And hey, you know what? Maybe we should do this again next week. And I'll go through the program with you. If you don't get to it. Yeah. Right? Like there's, there, it, it changes the dynamics. But that is the most important thing. is We need to be willing to hear, God, what are you doing right now in this person's heart and life? And how do I facilitate them meeting Jesus? Whether it's salvation or whether it's a whole moment of hope or peace or joy or life or that they can just lay down their baggage or take it off the mask, how do I facilitate? That's all I have to do. Facilitate people meeting to Jesus. Yeah. Connecting with Jesus. Last thing is there's three doors that we talk about at Celebrate Recovery. The first door is our large group. The next door is our open share group. And the final door is our step study group. When we go through Newcomers 101, literally this is all that we try to cover. Everything else is secondary. What is CR? It's these three parts. And number two, what are the group guidelines? What's expected of them when they go into those share group groups? If I cover those two things in a Newcomers group, it's a successful newcomers group. Yeah. Even if we didn't share testimonies, even if we didn't get to, get to, well, they don't know how to properly introduce themselves. I'm Daniel, I'm a grateful believer, and I struggle with it. They don't know that. Right. Who cares? Yeah. They'll figure it out. We can help them with that in the group. Mm -hmm. The most important part is that connecting to the program and Jesus, mm -hmm. and then also the protection of the program that's going on. So there is, like we do for every single share group, there is a binder. Please use the binder. And we actually have it scripted out. Um, in your folder, you'll actually see the layout of the intro to Celebrate Recovery, the, the time schedule of what that goes through. And there's a bunch of other ones in there as well. Step study and share group. They all look the same. Why did we do that? So that it's simple for people to follow. If you know how to learn, if you know how to lead newcomers group and follow that, you can now lead a share group and follow the same format. You can lead a step study and follow the same format. So this is part of what you guys like. Sometimes we've heard, well, I didn't, I wasn't trained on this, and we wish we could train you even more. Some of the training, though, has to be your own responsibility where you go, I'm going to look over the schedule, and I'm going to just follow it the way it's laid out. 
And if you do that, you will have a successful group. Um, we've seen, or I'm going to point out my step study guys for a minute, but we've seen them lead groups that are now leading sessions. And boy, it sure flows nice when there's a script there and they just follow point, 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 point. They know what to do. We know what to expect. It brings a consistency to the group where people feel safe. So please, 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 use the binder. It's here for you. You can just walk through it. Welcome, an icebreaker. So what does that look like? I'm doing a quick one-on-one -on -one right now so you see how it goes. Do I have one minute, two minutes? Okay. Okay. Um, so quick one-on-one. -on -one. This is how we would do it. Hey, welcome. I haven't seen you. I'm Daniel. Sean, so, nice to meet you. Have you been to Celebrate Recovery before? My first time. First time. Welcome to Celebrate Recovery. Everybody, no, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. He's um, no, and you guys know we don't do that. We, but, you know, I personally want to welcome. I'm glad it's your first time. We have an intro group that I, I'm going to be leading tonight. Uh, if you want, grab a coffee or water, go to the bathroom. Have a smoke break. I say this. Why? Because, again, people are coming in that are making out and freaking out. And this is my first time in recovery, and I've only been sober a week. And I'm, I'm freaking out. I need to smoke so bad. And we're singing songs, and everybody's saying, I'm a great believer in Jesus. And I don't know what's going on here. And this is, and sometimes you go have a smoke. Yeah. Oh. I'll be here in five minutes. We're going to be right at this table, and I'll go and go through the five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> should have, should, I know I shouldn't have brought it up. Um, but, you know, so that's that's the icebreaker. When you see that, that's my icebreaker. Welcome, coffee, water, bathroom, smoke. We're going to start in about five minutes at this table up front. Then we get there, and I'll just say, my name's Daniel. I'm going to be leading the group tonight. My wife, Ashley, is co leading with me. And uh, the goal of this group is we're just going to tell you about Celebrate Recovery and answer any questions you have. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if we open in prayer? No? Okay, I'm going to pray. Now we move down. There's a video. Hey, I'd like to just take a minute and show you a video. It is a six-minute video that we've done that puts together... Um, who has not seen the new intro video that we've done? And that's okay if you have a video I don't expect you to. Um, so it goes through, it is on our Facebook page as well. We can send it out by email, it's on our YouTube as well. Um, it goes through Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved an uh, alcoholic, drug addict. And they just share their story with one words like that. Codependent, broken, angry, whatever it is. So that it, People see this is a lot of issues that come together. Because we have a lot of people that will check out Celebrate Recovery, but I'm not an addict. Okay, but did anything in that video, do you struggle with anything? Yeah, I, I'm angry. I have trust issues. I'm great, then you're in the right place. And then it goes through the three doors. So it now explains the three doors. Celebrate recovery is, you know, the large group, there's worship. You don't even have to know all of the, th the things. You just let them watch the video. And then at the end you ask, is there any questions about the three doors, about the different parts? Have you been to, I always like to talk about, have you been to another anonymous type group or 12-step group? Yes. You're going to notice a couple differences. We always have worship, and we unashamedly declare that Jesus is our higher power and the only way to do it. Yeah. That's it. So then we just keep going down. Maybe we get to our stories. Maybe we don't. Then we go through the, the, uh, the guidelines. <laughs> When I start talking about, so next week when you come back, because you're coming back, we're excited to have you here, you'll go into the share group and they do the same thing we're doing right now. They sit in a circle and we go through the small group guidelines. I'm going to read those for you now. We just read them out. Do you have any questions? No. Pretty self-explanatory. What's shared there stays there. Don't interrupt others. No foul language. Okay? Pretty simple stuff. And you have three to five minutes. So that's it. That is what a newcomers, that's our newcomers group. That's right from walking them through the door, right through CR 101. And I hope that that helps you guys. Yeah, chips. Chips, I'm talking about chips real quick. So it, it just like you do in the share groups, 
We have in sticks or in the newcomers group these blue chips. Um, those are great to give to people. Again, this is just another way to help people feel welcomed and connected. Very simple. There's two sides. They change this. I'm going to rip this. I can't. Um, so they, they've changed this now this year. It's, it's new. I used to have a good speech that I had for the old one, but the new one still works. So on one side it says the journey begins. And I just encourage them, hey, congrats, thanks for being here. Even walking through the door today is a victory. You come in here and we want to celebrate, celebrate with you. This is exciting. Congratulations. Okay, the other side says celebrate recovery, my grace is enough. And I just tell them, you know, I want you to know no matter what you face, if you turn to the Lord, he will help you through it. And I hope that you feel that there's a connection here and a family here that you can grow and be safe with. And I give it to them just like I do on stage. I, I, congratulations on being here. This is, you, you did it tonight. Doesn't that feel good? Like you're your leader and already that feels like, oh, there's a handshake, there's a, you know, like just make this a celebration. Right. You get a check. You get a check. You get a check. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got some work to do. Um, <laughs> so, I think is that good? You're happy with that? Did I miss any of the results? Hey, we're good. So that is Cucumbers 101. Thank you for letting me share. <laughs>